Good morning, Ascend Global Church. Good morning. Good morning. It says in the word, oh, clap your hands, all you people. Yes. Shout for the glorious word. For the King of glory. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. He is King of all the earth. So come on, Ascend. Clap your hands. Give him a shout of praise.
We join with the hosts of heaven. We sing, Lord, worthy, worthy. Lord God Almighty.
love you so much. We honor you today. We're so grateful, Father, for your life, for your breath in our lungs. We thank you today for your spirit within us today. Father, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy, your amazing love and kindness that you've shown to us. Father, we come before your presence today. Father, we come by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We take our place before your throne today. Father, we give you honor. Father, we give you our heart, our affections to you this morning. Father, we've come to meet with you, come to hear your voice. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence here right now. Touch people. We haven't come for information, Father, we've come to be touched by your presence. We've come to hear from you, to experience your touch upon our life. Father, as we lift up your name, our prayer this morning is that your kingdom would come. Father, either even now that you would manifest the reality of your kingdom, that your kingdom, that your ways would be established in our hearts, Father. Holy Spirit, come and speak, minister to people this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your resurrecting power. The power that resurrects. The power that brings healing and resurrection to bodies, hearts, souls, minds. Holy Spirit, today, would you resurrect people? Would you resurrect hopes and dreams? For those who've had miscarriages, I'm not here to, don't want to embarrass you or anything like that. I felt you in my heart for those women that have experienced Miscarriages, especially recent times. One of the things I feel in my heart, which is a great thing, is the conception of a new life. It's a beautiful miracle. And I'm believing that this year, a lot of babies will be conceived. All right. <laughs> but I also felt to pray for those who have had miscarriages, and especially in recent times or maybe in the last, five, in the last few years. Just wherever you are, I'm not, not, not going to embarrass you, but you know who you are. Father, I pray today. Father, for every woman here that has miscarried. Father, for those that are still carrying the weight of that, still carrying the pain of that. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would breathe into wombs today. Holy Spirit, that you bring your resurrection power into the wombs of women here today in Jesus' name where there has been death. Holy Spirit, bring resurrection, bring life today in Jesus' name. I speak life. Father, I thank you today that you are the giver of all life. I 
pray, Holy Spirit, that even right now, that you would just generate life, that you would put seeds of life into people here this morning. Dreams, hopes, that which has been stolen. Father, bring restoration today in Jesus' name. And all those people said, all right. Come on, why don't you turn to somebody just love on them this morning? Come on, if you're going to clap, give it a good clap. We're not going to do things by quarters. Great to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. We're going to bless the Lord with our finances this morning. From Vision Sunday, I felt the word of God on my spirit. They had to prepare for increase. Prepare for increase. That's in every dimension of our life except our belly. Prepare for enlargement. One of the things we want to do is, I want to see God's favor, God's financial blessing on your life. I want to see His blessing on your finances. So today, as we give, as we sow, we want to bless the Lord with our finances. And I'm believing for there to be an increase. And I'm not just going to believe for it, but we are going to show you over the course of this year, we're going to show you and teach you ways to increase and how to prepare for financial blessing. How many want to agree with me this morning? Yes. Financial increase does not come just by fasting and praying. There are keys for the kingdom that you can apply to your life to gather financial increase. And we're going to do this morning, we just start with acknowledging the Lord as our source of provision. That's what our tithing does. So let's bless the Lord with our finances this morning and let's pray, prepare the ground for increase. Let's worship Him. So if this is your first time here today, or if you're visiting, no my harumai, we welcome you today. We sure hope that do. you feel welcome today. So um, also, shout out to our online family. Sorry, I always forget, but welcome to our online family. And we pray, if you are here in the Hastings area, get in your car and get in here, because you don't want to miss this atmosphere right now, eh? No, it's, Amen. A, it's lively this morning. <laughs> Okay, so um, any new people, any of uh, our special guests here today, if this is your first time, we actually have a really great team here at the back. Our welcome we team. Do. Hey, wave your hands in the air like you just We've don't got care. Bob and Liz come on. And yes. Julie and Javon. Um, after service, come and meet our welcome team here, and they'll be able to shout you a couple of coffees or, or yes, a cold uh, drink yes, today, maybe. Shout yes. some coffees, and we'd love to get to know more about you and more about who you are. And we want to tell you about who we are and what we're about here at Sing Global Church. Amen. Amen. And if you are sitting next to someone who looks new, introduce yourself. Welcome them out for a cuppa as well. Come on. It's not just a visitor's team job, it's all of us. All right. This week is a special week, actually. Yes. This week, we definitely want to make sure we have the chocolates out because it's the birthdays and anniversaries week. Oh. Who's had a birthday this week? Yes, oh, I think so. I have. Too. <laughs> yes, I have. Happy birthday, we have a team. Put your yes, hand up. Yes, if you've had a birthday, keep it up until you have your chocolate. Thank Kelly's you. been waiting all week. I have. Yeah. Last year, Cyclone kind of scuppered that one. Yeah. And anniversaries, any anniversaries? We've got some birthday down the back. Oh, Anyone had a wedding anniversary this week? No anniversaries. One at the back. I think it's a birthday one. Okay. Awesome. So, if you came through the door, or if you were here last week, you would have seen this card. Yeah. One by one. So, um, in this season, if you missed um, uh, Pastor Dave's amazing uh, sermon, where, um, our vision for this year is yeah. stretch. That is our word. We had in power, and this year is stretch. So, in terms of that, we will be stretching and um, really believing for souls here in this church um, and in Aotearoa. So, if I'm um, the instructions on this is, if you have a family member or friend or work colleague that you're really believing for 
really believing for um, for souls to be saved by Christ in his name, no other name but his name, then write down this card, their name, and we're going to believe for them and pray for them each and every day. Um, for me, I actually have my one-by-one one card on my phone because it seems to be um, the thing that I have in my hand all the time. So <laughs> that's my little reminder. I'm going to get in prayer and I'm going to pray for family members, yeah. work colleagues, friends that I'm really believing for in this season. Let's stretch out season. beyond Amen. here. Amen. 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 All right, the other thing we've got on your seats this morning, you would have noticed one of these. Join the team. It's that time of year again. We would love for you to open it up. Amen. It has got all the areas that you could serve in in our, in our house. And I'd have to say, I serve A, it's a great way to meet people, get connected in. And B, as a parent, I do it to build a legacy for my kids, to show them that serving in the house brings a, a humility and a servant heart and it's important for them to see that not only in the house but in my own home um, we, we need people to help out so have a look if there's an area that you're interested in we're going to get in touch with you um, there's some boxes down the back and one on the ask me desk where you can put these um, so fill in your details tick whatever boxes you're interested in and we'll be in touch amen awesome are there any business people around here put your hand up any business people? Amazing. So, what you need to know is there is actually going to be a business dinner that um, Pastor Dave um, has started up. And if you want to know more about this, we have a date set down. So, save the date here, Friday the 12th of April, okay? We want you to get into this. This is going to be really good for your business, for yourselves as individuals. But it's, an, it's not just any, any kind of business dinner. This is with Christ at the center of it. And that's what's going to be the game changer. So save that date, business people out there. Amen. Yeah. Another announcement that was come up last week with our Vision Sunday was that we are going to be partnering with Bethlehem Tertiary Institute. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is a Christian tertiary education facility up in Tauranga, and they are specifically going to have a pilot program run out of our very house up in the back room potentially for early childhood education and primary education so if that is you and you're thinking yeah I want to I want to get into education we need more teachers and what's more we need Christian teachers we need teachers with values that are going to speak to the values of our families not just give them knowledge about academic things we need to give them tools for, um, for what they're going to do in their lives and to be impactful. So if you are interested in getting on board with that course, you can register at the Ask Me desk and we're just going to watch a short video. More than ever, New Zealand needs great teachers, and we are in the business of preparing great teachers. We are a Christian tertiary provider based in Tauranga, and we are coming to you. We have partnered with Ascend Global Church to bring our primary and ECE education programs in the Hawke's Bay. Our block courses, which are usually taught on-site in Tauranga, will be delivered to you by our BTI educators right here at Ascend Church. And we have a mid-year intake starting in July. If you think that early childhood or primary teaching is a career path that interests you, then take advantage of this opportunity and register your interest today. We'd love to hear from you. Amen. All Amen. Right. There's going to be a interest meeting for that coming up soon, so watch the dates coming up. Yes. Stick with us. Stick with us. We have three more notices, and then I know you're ready so for exciting. this sermon, okay? <laughs> so, ladies, where are you at? Yes. If you had fun at the She Coffee um, date that we had yes. together, we are hitting new levels, all right? Yes. We had the She Clothes Party, oh, yes. Clothes Party 2024, okay? So basically, what we're doing is this is going to be um, everything's going to be supporting uh, Acorn um, Project. So this is actually supporting families and young people who are going through cancer and who have cancer. So this is a great, great initiative, and we really want to back this. Um, so what can you do um, right now? We're looking at cleaning out your closets um, and your husband. And we're going to bring them down here to church um, this coming Sunday. Uh, ne sorry, next Sunday onwards, yes. okay? So some Third of the of husbands March. are like, oh, you know, okay, my wife can go and do that, but no, 
you can be a part of this, okay? So when you go home today, look in your wife's closet and see which side is heavier, your side or his side. And what you can do is by contributing, bring the bag, start start getting the, new, the old clothes out, okay? So you can actually be a part of this, all right? And these shoes were actually sponsored by the clothes party. <laughs> so let me tell you now. It's a win-win for yeah, everyone. These look like $90, so yeah. yeah. Get on to it. I know. Gather and hold, ladies. Gather and hold for next Sunday. So next weekend, we have a really exciting event happening in our kids' ministry. Really exciting. As, as a church, we are stretching. And in our kids, we are reaching. We are reaching for the things of God. We are, have got an exciting um, team coming to minister to us and to impart to our leaders on the Friday night. And then the kids' conference is from 1 to 7 p.m. on the Saturday. So parents... Get your kids registered. We need those registrations in because if you're not registered, you're not there and you're going to miss out on a bunch of fun. Prizes, fun, slime even. Yes, that will happen here. Um, So I want you to make sure that you have registered either on the online app or the website. There are, you can register out in the kids squad. You can register in the uh, uh, Ask Me Desk. There will be people making sure you have your children registered. It is something that we want to invest into our children. We want to equip them. We want to help them to stretch, and to do that, we're going to help them reach. Amen. So get involved. Get behind this. Awesome. And one last notice. So this coming Sunday, so today at 6 p.m., uh, we have our Welcome to Church night, and this will be in our church cafe, 6 p.m. So this is a night for um, if anyone who's new to a Sing Global Church, or if you've been coming for a while and you want to know more about our church, um, this will be at a smaller scale, a time to meet our pastors. Um, and leaders across across the Sing Global Church. Um, uh, for me, I actually met my friend Alicia uh, on the at the last Welcome to Church yes. night, and um, the, yeah, that was our first time meeting on that night. And honestly, since then, she's been connected into YA, and she's she's running for the Lord. I'm telling you now. So meet us here tonight, 6 p.m. at the Church Cafe. Yes. Um, for more info on everything else, because I yes. know you guys are like, come on, Noel, come on, Kelly. No. You need to grab a pamphlet and, or a brochure and you need to have a read through some of the up and coming events for our youth and for It's not things. just for holding, Amen. it's for reading. Awesome, so if um, we could ask our family just to stand up and we're going to welcome the word that is coming today. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Jesus a shout of praise this morning. We lift you up, Father. We open up our hearts to hear from you today. And just remain standing. um, Where's Sandra? Sandra, whereabouts are you? You had Elijah House. Come on. Beautiful. There you are. Come on, let's put it together for you. Please, you may be seated. You had a good time over the weekend? It's been fabulous. Um, we're finishing uh, our 10-day school, and uh, it's been absolutely wonderful, the best school ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so um, we ask a couple people if they would like to share the, some of their experience. They'll, they'll keep it short. Um, but it, it's just been a fabulous move of God. Thank you guys for praying. Thank you for supporting it. And Sungi and Mena are going to just share a little bit about their experience. Great. He was here. Quick change of clothes. All right. Morning, morning. No, all right. Sorry, I just um, put a couple of things down. No, oh, it's all good. I'll take a couple of minutes to find it. Anyway, um, yeah, so Elijah House, we've been doing it, and today is our last day. And honestly, it's been, um, it's been such a game changer for our marriage. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably say for our marriage, but also for myself. Like, a, just think of the story. Like, a couple of years ago, we had a house inspection, right? And we didn't know that the house inspector was coming over. Anyway, they went and opened the door, and then they messaged, I think they messaged my wife and said, hey, I didn't think the... House was meant to look like that. You want me to come back another day? So it was a, it was a mess. And so I looked at it and I used sort of that concept. It's sort of the same thing with what happens in Elijah House. Instead of opening the door, it's like the Holy Spirit goes, Poosh, and walks in and goes, my, oh my. <laughs> anyway, I had a good laugh with Peter about it. And so, man, because every single subject or topic, you think one just relates to you, but 
when you go through every single one, man, something tugs on your heart and you're like, man, there's some hidden stuff inside of my heart that I didn't know was affecting my walk with the Lord, but then also my, my marriage with my wife. And so I think of the, the, um, I think of the, the scripture, Psalm 84, verse 11 says, the Lord is my son and my shield. But in the second half it says, no good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk righteously with him. Mm-hmm. And I think, well, God doesn't want to withhold things from me. And so a lot of us think that Satan withholds things, but there's stuff that we withhold from ourselves. Mm. Mm. And so, that, you know, like I think that going through this healing, like it's just opened up, not a can of worms, a can of blessing. And so, yeah. praise the right. Lord. That's awesome. I'm going to just quickly add to Sangha. Yeah. Excuse me. But um, there's a saying they mentioned in there, and it's um, God has placed you with your beloved enemy. Um, I didn't understand that until this week alone. <laughs> and, um, oh... My beloved husband was my beloved enemy. But the, the beautiful thing is that what we're learning is um, that we're, like, this is not just between our marriage, but relationship in general, is that we need to take care of each other's hearts. They're just fragile hearts. And, you know, the same grace that we are extended from God, we need to give that grace to each other. So, um, yeah, it's been a beautiful experience. My eyes and my heart is opened, and I'm ready to learn more. <laughs> That's great. Well done. So would you re- recommend that all your brothers and sisters go next time? Oh, 100%. I was asking if there's some in Australia, some in um, Samoa, like everyone needs to do this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so you're all welcome. There'll be uh, announcements. Um, and so plan ahead. It's life-changing, and uh, you'll never be the same. It's just an amazing time. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. I want to open up, uh, just bring to you a couple of scriptures this morning, and uh, again, it is something that I've had resonating in my spirit, and that I'm exceptionally hungry for, and uh, I want to bring out just a couple of, uh, a couple of sp- scriptures that I've brought out over the last few weeks, because um, I don't want to just move off from it too quickly, because this is of value, and I'm believing for uh, exceptional change, both in my life and us collectively. There was a scripture here, many of you know it. It's in Mark chapter 5, verse 3. And um, one of my uh, prayers over the fasting season uh, has, has not been very complex, but it has simply been this. Father, show me your kingdom. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your kingdom be revealed. Open up my eyes of my understanding that I'd see the realm of your kingdom, that I'd walk in the reality of your kingdom not just in in theory, but let it be manifest in and around and through my life. And uh, for many people, you can go through through life or go through church and get a lot of head knowledge, but the reality of the the life of Christ is not there. And uh, I'd much rather go to my grave that my life has been outpoured fully with, with, with his resurrection power than go with just a head full of knowledge and theology. Theology doesn't do much for you. It, gives, it provides you with some things, but it's the reality of his life and his presence, the reality of his kingdom that brings the absolute change. And it says here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 30, many of you know the story about the woman with the issue of blood. But again, it's this one line that has captured my imagination. And it says that Jesus knew at once that somebody had touched him For he felt the power that always surged around him had passed through him for somebody to be healed. And I think the the essence of the kingdom can be wrapped up in that, that the power that surged around him, that continuously surged around him, there was a power that was surging around Jesus all of the time. This was a story that the context of the story was in the marketplace. So it was in the street. It was not in the church building with the music and the sound. It was in the marketplace. Somebody say in the marketplace. In the marketplace. The marketplace is in the area of, of either education, business, politics, um, anywhere in the street, in the sports field. Everywhere that he went, there was a power that was surging around him that somebody tapped into. It was felt around him. It was experienced around him. But then it flowed through him for somebody to be healed. The kingdom... It's not about for you just to have a head full of knowledge and post post good, meaningful sounding Facebook posts. It's it's not the kingdom. The kingdom always brings hope and resurrection and healing into the world around us. That's the evidence of the kingdom. 
And so the Bible says there was a power that surged around him. It surged around him all of the time. And then when somebody tapped into it, somebody recognized it, tapped into him, and they were that power, and they were healed. And as a pastor, one of the things I know for a lot of people, that power is absent, or they're in a small measure. For many people, it's not a power that brings resurrection and brings healing. It's a dysfunction that operates around them. For many people, even people that have been in church for a long time and been through this, uh, got a lot of theology, the reality of their life can be such as that there is dysfunction going everywhere around them, and no one really gets healed. In fact, what it does is propagate more dysfunction. That's what religion does. Religion propagates, it doesn't just propagate dysfunction. What religion will do is it would put makeup on dysfunction and make it look good and not deal with the real issues. But the kingdom is about bringing real change and transformation in our life. And the evidence of that, somebody say the evidence. There's always an evidence. There's always an evidence or manifestation of the kingdom when it's built and established in our life. The evidence of that is that people around us start to come alive. Wherever Jesus went, sure there was contention, but the contention was against religious spirits. What it was doing was resurrecting the spirits, the hearts of men and women. That's the evidence of the kingdom. And, and so from this place, everything that we do, everything, or the songs we sing, or the messages, or the courses that we do, or the deliverance, it's got to come somewhere. It's got to accumulate somewhere where the kingdom of God is being established in our life, but it's expressed through us and bringing hope and transformation around us into the world. If it's not bringing hope and transformation, then somewhere there is a dam that's blocking it. We want to unplug that dam. And this is, and I want to just... Um, look at this dynamic a lot more because we're not seeing it. I'm not seeing it as much as I want to see it. I'm not seeing that dynamic. If I was to be honest, I've, I've seen some incredible things. I've seen the dead raised twice. I've seen uh, a number of things happen. I've seen the... But I want to see more of that. Would I read that? That, that power that surged around Jesus, that, that power that brought life, that power that brought hope, that power that brought joy into people's lives. I want to see more of that. I want to see more young people arise. I want to see, more, I want to see the destruction come to a minimum and, 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 and be gone. I want to see the kingdom of God be manifest in and through our lives so that the ground, even the very soil that we stand on comes to life. Why not? Leaders believe for things like that. You want to be a son? That's what you got to believe for. He says there was a power that surged around him. The kingdom life, kingdom life always brings resurrection. Kingdom life always brings hope. It challenges that which keeps people in bondage, and it also brings people to life. But there was a spiritual dimension. There was a spiritual, you couldn't see it necessarily with your natural eyes, but you could experience it. One of the things I was, uh, last year when I was with Rodney Howard Brown and Apostle Tamarit, I started to become aware much more of how far the church has often gone into places of intellect without, and the, and the realm of the spirit has been put to a back corner. The church, you are first, you and I are first born. We are, we are first and foremost spirit beings. Anyone that is born of a dog shall be a dog. Anything born of a cat is a cat. Anything born of a lion is a lion. Anything born of the spirit is a spirit. You and I are born of spirit. Of spirit. You are not God is spirit. We are born of his spirit, so we're first and foremost spiritual beings. And it's important that we are got to understand that we are to become more conscious of the spirit realm operating around in us and around us than we are of the natural. And the more you start to look at it, the more you start to see how powerful the realm of the spirit truly really is. I don't want us to be a church that's just full of information but a church that has encountered the reality and understands the kingdom and can propagate it in and through our lives. You can't propagate anything. You can't bring into reality that which you don't understand. So it's important that we understand, one, the realm of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. So we're gonna move through this a lot over the course. In fact, there's no stopping. <laughs> but what I'm believing is that it will transform you and your life and wherever God has positioned you in the marketplace that you would bring transformation. But we've got to understand the realm of the spirit. Religion will cover dysfunction. The other scripture brought out of the last couple of days was uh, Isaiah 54. 
Uh, enlarge the place of your tent. In other words, make room for increase. Stretch out, don't hold back. Lengthen your cords. All of this has to do with not a tent at all. <laughs> it's not to do with a physical tent. It's a metaphor of our life. It's a metaphor that makes up, that's a picture, a word picture that describes our life. Your heart, your inner life, first and foremost. Not your physical life as such, but it's your inner life that this piece of scripture uh, speaks to. So when we're talking about enlarge the place of your tent, it's not talking about buying yourself a bigger house. It's about the development of your internal life. The internal life being two, two things. One is your heart and your soul. Uh, the second thing is your spirit. They're both individual, but they are separate from one another. And, and so we're gonna see that this morning. The other Scripture brought out was in Job, uh, in Job chapter four and verse 21. It said their cord within them. In other words, the, the, when you read the word cord, the cord is a word picture of our spirit, your spirit, the essence of who you are, your spirit. He says when their cord within them, which describes your spirit life, the realm of the spirit within inside of you, when that is either withdrawn or in some cases cut, the whole tent collapses. The impact of it is the whole life comes down. And sadly, it says here that for many people, they are none the wiser. In other words, they can't connect what's going on in the realm of the spirit with inside of them to the impact of the world that's happening around them. And therein is something that I wanna open up and to help you understand over the course and together with Apostle Mike and, and other people we'll bring in to help understand this. Because I've been a Christian for a long time. Uh, to be honest, I still don't really understand it. But I'm beginning to. That's my why I'm praying. Father, help me understand your ways. David said this in the psalm. He said, show me your ways. In other words, don't give me, the he didn't say give me theology. He said, show me your ways. Let me see the ways of you, the, the ways of your kingdom. Let me see and understand the ways of the Spirit. Because the ways of the Spirit impact everything else in and around your life. Boom. Are you with me this morning? It's okay to get information, by all means. But most importantly, show me the ways of the Spirit. Show me your ways of your kingdom. David said that because sometimes we need, we, we, you've got to pursue understanding. You've got to pursue, but it's not always obvious because sometimes we're blinded by our own stuff. <laughs> That's why Jesus came to open up the eyes of the blind, not just the physically blind, but a sign that people would open up the eyes of our understanding, the eyes of our spirit. So these, both of these scriptures, and many more through the Bible, express a dynamic within our internal life, between our spirit and our soul, and it's a dynamic that can be observed in the lives of people. You can observe spiritual activity with your eyes. You can see it. The issue is you've just got to learn to see it. That's why I, one of the things I pray, help me, Holy Spirit, to help me see what I'm not seeing. Therein is a core concept in business right there. That which makes a genius is not the part, smartest person in the room, but the person that can see what nobody else can see. Help me see what I can't see. I know what I can see. What I can see is obvious. But help me really see. Help me see what I don't understand. Because when I understand it, then I can get that power, then I can bring the kingdom into my life. So part of the prayer, that's what makes the Lord's prayer so powerful, so simple, but yet so amazing. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So simple, but yet in reality, it's like, help me open my eyes, Holy Spirit, that I may see. Help me open my spirit, open my spirit that I would understand. Because when I understand the kingdom, the more I see it, the more I understand it, the more I can walk in it. The more it becomes a reality and not just something I, pray, I can pray like a parrot. I don't wanna just pray that prayer like a parrot. I want that prayer to be manifest in my life, that wherever I go, people are resurrected and the glory doesn't go to me, but the glory goes to God, simply. Interesting, it says the tent cords are pulled and the tent collapses and they die in ignorance. Their life withers up and they're none the wiser. If you look at that, just that line alone. Either the tent cord is pulled, something of the spirit is withdrawn or taken away, or it's cut and the tent collapses. If you look in society, if you, I mean, you can look in your own life, you can look at certain lives of other people, but that's not just applicable for people. You look at society as a whole. 
when the kingdom, when Christ is taken out of society, when, when, when Christ is taken out of education, when the spirit that originated education, which goes back to Moses, education, for example, was supposed to be connected with faith and family and community. And when you take God out of education, it'll stay up for a little while, but then things will start to collapse. The purpose of education will start to collapse. You'll see that. You'll see economy. You'll see world economies, especially to do with money. When a wrong spirit, when other things are withdrawn, when the kingdom is taken away from finances, you'll see economic collapse. In other words, one of the things that you'll see uh, what brought down the Roman Empire, the most powerful empire that has ever ruled the world to this point. The one thing that brought it down, the primary thing was this, immorality. In other words, they crucified Christ. They didn't see their opportunity, but the, 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 the immorality from the inside out, Rome, the most powerful in, empire in the world, fell from the inside out. They rejected Christ. And the very thing that could have helped them, pulled out, taken away. Rome collapsed. Took a little while, but it still collapsed. Collapsed from the inside. And just see the scripture says here, the cord on the inside is pulled in and the whole thing collapsed. You'll find that there are, even in churches, when they forget and ignore the spirit of the Holy, the Holy Spirit, the very spirit that birthed the church, and we become more about information and become more about knowledge and become more about doctrine and you forget the Spirit of God. In fact, the Spirit of God is either removed. One of the things you'll find is it just becomes a dead shell and eventually that institution will... And no one's gonna get it. Why? Because the very thing, the very essence, and it's the same with families. The reason we have families Healthy families. A healthy family is, is established by a threefold cord. When Christ comes out, you find that when you deliberately walk away from Christ and start to move that center, that center cord from your life, people find that their families, they may not see it straight away, but down the track you see your kids start to run off. Boom. Come on. And they don't know why these things have happened. They don't know why the effect, this, the fruit of this is in, 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 their, in their family life. You find that sometimes that cord is just let go a little bit. Sometimes it's cut and severed and they walk away, but sometimes it's, people are seduced into just bringing it back and just reducing it. And over time, it starts to collapse. The kingdom comes to bring Christ back at the center. I wonder, if you, you can have a look around in the world, you think about, well, what's finance got to do with God? Well, actually, it's got everything to do with God. And you'll see that there are systems in the world today, they will collapse and they need to collapse. Are you with me? Of course. There are systems in the world today. There is a financial system that's in place. There are spirits that operate around that system. And they keep people in debt and they shift power around the world. But we know that there's, gonna, there's a coming kingdom that will come as a small stone but knock and every other kingdom will come down. That's the kingdom that you want to be building in the inside of you. Some tents must come down so other things can be established. Are you with me this morning? Here's the thing, many, many churches don't teach about the ways of the spirit or the healing of the heart. Here I see, and we want to do both, we do both. So I'm preaching today, it's not just about information, but it's about understanding the ways of the spirit. The effect of the spirit realm around your natural life. And I can, I can tell you right now, I've listened, uh, I've been in the church long enough, I've observed firsthand what happens when people stand in their rightful place in the spirit. I'll tell you a little funny story. I had this, when I was younger, I had this girlfriend, and it's it just nothing, nothing serious. I promise. 
And yeah, she's a nice girl. Uh, but her mum was involved in witchcraft. And she was into palm reading and stuff like that. And there was no conflict. There was no issue. There was no, we kind of got on well. It's, you know. But one day, it just broke off. It was like, it's like no longer friends, just like that. Boom. I, I could not understand why. And like I said, it wasn't serious. Like it wasn't a big heartache or anything. It was just one of those things. But what I discovered later was my dad as a father had been standing in that space, in a higher space in the spirit, and could see the spiritual influences coming around my life and started to pray not against the relationship. Isn't this truth, Dad? Yeah, of course not. I'm not telling techers. It's the platform. Started praying against the spiritual influence that was coming around. Boom, not against the relationship, but against the spiritual powers, the spiritual influence, the influence of witchcraft. Boom, it broke off. There's a whole bunch more, more, much more dramatic stories, isn't there? (laughs) People dropping dead, boom, just like that, because they're interfering. Understand the realm of the spirit. You are a spirit being. Our spirit exists inside of here. It actually exists inside your heart. Your life is like an onion. I've got lots of different layers. You have the body and you have an internal life. But there's layers to your internal life as well. The Bible clearly says that there's a distinction between spirit and soul. The Word of God rightly divides. So it's quite different. So there's an element to your being which is spirit. There's an element to your life which is soul and heart. Oh, what's the difference? I want to just open it up a little bit for you. And look, we're not going to do it over this, just this one session. We're going to help you understand it. I'm wanting to grow on this myself. But it's our, our soul and our spirit together that makes you and I a living being. It's the heart and the spirit together that define us as a living being. Interesting that the, the dynamic between the heart and the spirit is the epicenter of God's redemptive and creative power in the earth. It's also the source of conflict. It's the spiritual influence connected with the brokenness of heart and an unredeemed heart, a lawless heart that brings conflict and wickedness into the world. But in the same way, God brings healing to the earth through man. Why? Because God gave earth to the man. Man being male and female. He gave earth to the man. And so part of our redemptive story is the healing and the transformation on the inner life, your heart and your spirit, the formation of your spirit, so that you and I as kings of the earth can reclaim that which has been stolen. Man lost, didn't lose a religion. Man lost a, a kingdom, king's domain. God created man to have dominion over the face of the earth, custodian of it. Start with your bedroom. <laughs> Start with the lawns. Start with finances is a good spot too. You're not gonna come into a place of great power and authority when those finances are a little shambles. So we're we're gonna help you a little bit with that. The internal part is where heaven is released. The Bible says here, you saw that in Jesus. Jesus came to demonstrate it. He said there was a power that was surging around him, but it also went through him. So inside of him, you see Jesus transfigured on the mount. You see Jesus as the the model, as what you and I are called to be like. That there was a power that surged in him that was developed on the inside of him and there was an anointing around him. That's a whole other message. But there was, a, a, there was a, an anointing, there was an authority that was built within Jesus. It didn't happen overnight. It built from a young age all the way through. That anointing that was inside of him, that authority that was inside of him was built and forged all the way from a young age. So you don't get it by just laying hands on you. It doesn't work like that. It works by walking through a process 
and staying the course. Where your heart, your internal life is formed. But you also grow in spirit. You'll find that such dynamics of the relationship between the spirit realm and the heart or the spirit and the soul is actually reflected all through the world. You can see, so the question is, help me understand the ways of the Spirit. Well, actually, Jesus has already shown, God has already shown us how you can see or how you can learn to understand the ways of the Spirit. One of the questions I was asked, I keep asking, show me your ways, Lord. show me the interaction, show me how the Spirit realm, help me understand more about how the Spirit realm works and how it impacts my life and the hearts of people. And I was just thinking about it the other day, and, and I felt the Lord said, to just when I say felt the Lord, it was just a word that came in. It wasn't a flash from heaven or anything like that. It, but it just, just said this, study meteorology. What do you mean? Look up, look, he said, look up the word meteorology. So I looked up the me, word meteorology. And it says this, meteor, meteorology is the study of things high in the air. God has shown us his ways. There are ways that are yet to be revealed. Just because they need to be revealed doesn't necessarily mean they are not there yet. We just haven't seen them yet. Show me the study. He said, just look at meteorology. And if you understand meteorology, you'll understand more about the ways of the Spirit. I love meteorology. Anyone know what it is? Sorry? Yeah, anyone else? It's the study of things high in the sky or high in the atmosphere and their effect on the earth below. It affects the weather patterns. It affects the sea. You look at how the sea, the ocean currents. How does the ocean move around like this? How come the ocean can go from a mill pond one day into a raging torrent the next and then calm off? Where do the, and I love the book of Job, it says, can you fathom the depths of the ocean? Can you tell me where the bottom is? Everything that you see in the ocean, for example, it's a study in itself, but the currents, the way that the sea moves and how, how the tide comes in and out, all of that has to do with the celestial beings. In other words, the tide doesn't go in and out like that. Simply what it does, it just is responding to the moon. So when you understand the core of meteorology is the study of things high in the sky, but the other part of that is the effect of that they have on the earth below. The fact that you have vegetables growing in your garden. It's not primarily because of the fact that you put a seed in there. It has, that has certainly got to do. You don't get anything that you don't, you don't sow. But the fact that you have a, something that grows on a tree or something that grows on the ground or some, anything that grows out of like that is largely dependent upon what happens in the sky. Are you with me? So one of the things you can see, God, Jesus used natural elements. He used natural processes to, ex, to explain spiritual truths. So if you want to see what's happening on the sea, if you want to know what's, what the sea's going to do, one of the things I do is I look at the weather. What's the sky going to do? What's the weather pattern going to happen? Because if I know what's going to happen here, I know what it's going to do out here. I don't know if you've watched the America's Cup racing. Uh, uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce's brother is involved there. He's one of the, one of the main team leaders on, on Team New Zealand. But there was a guy there, they have one, one person, and one of the jobs is to stand at the front, or, or the, where they are in the boat, and just to find where the wind is. You know, where, 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 what do you mean to find where the wind is? You can't see the wind. How can you just, how can you tell where the wind is going to be? But the job is to look and to look at puffs of wind, to look at the disturbance on the face of the water. The atmosphere, the, what's happening in the atmosphere, what's happening in the, in the realm above, and how it influences in the sea below. So, one of the, so you don't really have to, in many ways, to be a, an extraordinary prophet to see what's going on in people's lives. One of the things 
easiest ways is to observe spiritual influences that are coming around them. Things that they entertain, things that they listen to, things that they, people that they walk with or, or associate with. You'll soon see that spiritual influences, the influences of this, of this, of just in the natural, how the influence up here influences what goes on below. It's very, very easy to see that whoever people are listening to, whatever spirits people are entertaining, whether they know it or not, will it somewhere have an effect on their life. Either the ground will shut up and it will not be producing. If there's a lack of produce in your life, one of the things I'll be looking at is what influences are going on inside of your life. That's why, as a, you know, when I'm, I love going out into the sea, we're out there yesterday, and I, from a distance, I can see what the wind is doing, and I can see what that's going to do to the sea, and I know which way to go, take the boat. <laughs> it's not magic. I've started to learn the ways of how the wind affects the ocean. In fact, now we have technology that in my boat, you say, how can you see the bottom of the ocean? How can you see underneath? All I can see is the surface. We've got electronics now, but you've got to learn even how to read that. When I'm out in my boat, one of the things I can do is I can tell, I can, I can see what I can't see. And I can describe what I can't see. In the same way, when you can tune your eyes to what's going on in and around your life, you'll be able to see what you can't necessarily see, but it's always there. Are you with me? Let me open up. Scripture describes part of us like this. It said the heart is described as that of a tent or a house. So there's the element of your tent. The, 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 your tent, your heart is described as a tent or a house in which there are many chambers. That's why we're going to have a little look at the, through the house. In Psalm 60, 65, verse 5, it says this, the heart's real intentions are like deep water. You still the roaring of the seas and the crashing waves and people's turmoil. So you can see that even in nature, it describes the condition of the heart and physical structures, that of the, of the uh, sorry, the, the forces of nature. You can see the, 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 how it describes people's hearts, but it also describes people's spirit. Interesting that even the heart itself, the physical heart, reflects that of the spirit. Physiological, your physiological heart, the actual heart, you put your heart, you know, if you've got one, you should have, most of you should have one, a real one. There. Even the heart has an energy source. I, put the, I started to look at what actually makes the heart pump. Does it just go by itself? Or is there another energy source that empowers the heart to pump? And lo and behold, there is. <laughs> The, even the heart, your physical heart, inside your heart has an energy source called the cardiac conduction system, which sends electrical impulses through your heart to make it beat. It starts, interesting enough, in a group of cells called the pacemaker cells in the sinoatarial node in the top right of your atrium. In other words, in the top right portion of your heart, there is a seat there, and that there provides the energy for the rest of your heart to beat. When that goes, your heart stops, and guess what? The body collapses. <laughs> so even in the physiological body, you can see how the spirit realm and the internal life operate within a person. When the spirit goes, when the spirit collapses, when the spirit gives way, either by an influence or by, or by death, everything else collapses. The Bible even says that, that the spirit, the body without the spirit is dead in, I think, James chapter two. So, for many people, they spend their energies trying to get information or entertaining the body. But the Bible clearly says and clearly describes that your spirit is the essence of who you are. Your spirit is the essence of eternity. Your spirit, your internal life within your heart 
is the essence of what, what makes your life. And without that, even your heart will stop. It's good to look after your heart, but first you want to guard your spirit because it's your spirit that will give life to your heart. In the modern day, the Bible says that the, um, uh, in Proverbs, that the, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord that searches the, searches the deep things of the heart. So again, you have another analogy where there is a, a spirit that sits inside of your heart that searches, it's connected to the Lord, but it searches the deep things of your heart. Your heart is like the, the TARDIS. <laughs> Doctor Who, bigger on the inside. But there's an element of your being that's far bigger and far more extensive than you can imagine. So if you imagine your, your heart like your like a house. This is the way that it was described in the scripture that your spirit being, a, being like a lamp or like a fire. In fact, even the very name man and woman, the essence of that in Hebrew, both mean fire. So essentially what, what causes you to live is a fire, is an energy source inside of you. And there's a fire that sits on in the inside of you, both in the spirit, which is a fire, but in the natural, it's an energy source. In the scripture, it was described like a candle. They didn't have electricity as the way we do now. But if you were to describe what a, what a, a human being would be like in today's terms, it would be like this building. This building would be like your heart. And your spirit would be like the electrical system that powers sockets all through the heart. If you don't pay your bill, If you don't pay your power bill, all you've got is a dead shell sitting there. Every person, you both have a, you're, you, this, when it says enlarge the place of your tent, one of the things that we've got to do is look, look in every room, prepare the ground, we'll, we'll do that another day. But for many people there, their lives are like a building that have, with, with very little power source. I, I have been to countries where the power is unreliable, should we say. Found myself in very difficult, embarrassing situations with my pants down. And the power goes out. And you can't do anything. You can't call anyone. You can't do nothing. You're powerless. Everything stops. You'll want to come and experience that sometime, but you will understand. But your building for many people's lives are like that. They become a shell, and the power is intermittent. There's no power on in their life. Jesus said, you are a city on a hill, the light of the earth. What's he talking about? He's talking about your soul, your internal life, that which is the building, the, the tent of your heart, the life, the building of your heart. But he also refers that you are a light of the earth. In other words, that light is not just a physical light, it's a life of the spirit that lives inside of us. So it's both things that need to come alive. You need to have a, a building that has got a life source in it. There's no good having a building this size without the power to drive it. Baby, we have got power for Africa here. We are talking about Every building needs to have a power source. Every person got to have a power source. The question is, where are you drawing your power from? Where's, what's the source of your energy? What is the source? If we were to put a little candle in this room, we could barely light the place up. One of the things I was talking about, one of the engineers in the church here, how do we generate more power in this place so that not only we can power everything that we do, but sell it to the neighbours as well? It's an idea that comes from a spirit. It comes from a spirit being. Not, I just want a candle, so I just light just my, my own little table and that's about it. No, 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 no. We need much more than that. Come back to Jesus. There was a power that was surging around him and within him and it, brought, and it brought healing and it brought life. That is why it's important that we start to pray. That is why it's important that you build a prayer life because fire doesn't just burn by itself. It needs oxygen. Somebody's gotta be breathing on the fire of your spirit. 
It's got to take fuel somewhere. There's got to be something that your, your spirit will be burning. And for many people, there's a terrible smoke that comes off their spirit. You can tell when somebody's burning weed. Most people here would know what they're... Like when you're burning plastic, maybe it's something... Putting plastic on the fire, for example. I know. You walk along, you can smell something. And it's barbecue pork right there. I can't see it, but somebody's cooking it. The fire of your spirit. So spiritual influence is one of the most important things that you can have in your life. And I love the dynamic where Jesus said, that fire wasn't just a, a little fire that was just flicking inside of him. The fire that Jesus carried, the power, the passion, that, that the spirit that Jesus carried was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just a little candle that you just blow out. The Holy Spirit is a, a spirit that become what we need to have as a has prevailing influence in and around our life. And that can only happen one way, through prayer and worship, feeding on the Word of God. And I can tell you right now, as you start to worship, for me, when I get my prayer times, I don't want to just, Lord, I pray for this, and I pray for that, and I pray for this. Forget that. I don't pray for anything in my prayer time. My prayer time at this moment is, Lord, Father, show me your ways. Show me the ways of your kingdom. Father, today I want to build an atmosphere of your presence in and around my life. Help me understand the ways of your kingdom. Lord, let me build, Father, an atmosphere of heaven and around my life today. Are you with me this morning? I don't want to just come to church and just sing songs. I want these songs to build an atmosphere of the presence of God in, in my spirit. I want the, the word as it comes forth to bring change into my life. I want the word, I want the interactions that I have with people to bring down strongholds in my heart that are still there. Why? Because the world needs it. <laughs> Our world is not going to change by more church services. Our world will change by more people grabbing a hold of the kingdom of God, grabbing a hold of the spirit of God. That's how salvation will come. I can tell you right now, even in the worship time, I'm believing for ideas to pop into people's hearts. You might be thinking there, here's a business idea, I better shut that out because it's not of God but I'm in church. No, please don't. When you're in a place of worship, the Lord will start to show you things. What we need is the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom life is the only solution. Today, I want to encourage you. If your, source is none, if your source is anything else but Christ, your tent will eventually collapse. He even says that at the end of the day, when you stand before the Lord, whatever you've been built around your life will be tested with fire. There's going to be the fires of heaven. Shane Willard's got a great great message on that that purify your heart but what we're on our lives in this life now there's nobody going to be nobody else you're the one to go into that solution you're the one that God has chosen to, to fix that solution you don't need to bring it to me you fix it you're there <laughs> there are people here today maybe your tent is collapsing and you don't even know it Maybe your life is collapsing. Maybe your marriage is, maybe your, fa your family is experiencing some collapse. Maybe it's in your emotions, your internal life. Friends, the only way to bring healing, the only way, the only solution for that is Christ. You can't remove Christ out from your life and expect your tent to stand, remain standing. If there is a downfall somewhere in your life, one of the first places you want to be looking at is where have I let go of Christ? Where have I let go of His ways? Where have I let go? What's been missing? What, maybe it was never there in the first place. But I can assure you this, it doesn't matter what your background, doesn't matter what your circumstances are. When you make a commitment to 
first and foremost, to bring Christ at the epicenter of your being. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. My Father who art in heaven, let your will, let your let you be the one in which my life revolves around. Hallowed be your name. Father, you are the center of my life. My job is not my center. My sports is not my center. Finance is not my center. Father, you are the center of my life. We need more men that would stand up on a regular basis. Father, you are the center of my life. You are the center in which my, what my world revolves around, not the other way. Father, open my eyes today to the realm of your kingdom that I may learn your ways, learn your ways about finance, learn your ways about marriage, learn your ways about purity, learn your ways about relationship, learn your ways about eternity, learn your ways. Let me, learn, let me understand the ways of the Spirit, Lord, that I may walk in them and be, have them evident around my life. Today I am believing for every one of you, every one of us collectively, to experience this year a fresh dimension of the kingdom of heaven manifesting through our lives. But it starts at one point, the core of your being, your spirit. My encouragement to you is this. If it's your job or your business centering in which your life centers upon, Maybe you need to change that. If there's anything else but Christ in which your life revolves around, then it's somewhere you'll see things collapse. Fathers and parents, my, my encouragement to you today is this. Let's make a decision every day to seek the face of God, seek His presence to align our lives. The kingdom life is a, and a life aligned not around a church or an organization so much, but it's aligned around the kingdom, aligned around the Father. My encouragement to you today is this. What's the epicenter in which your life revolves around? <laughs> Make it a priority to learn the ways of the kingdom. Like I said the other Sunday, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else shall be added. Seek first. People here, God's ordained you to bring transformation into your realm of influence. My heart is that we're all like Jesus, <laughs> that we carry an atmosphere of heaven, not an atmosphere of dysfunction around our lives, <laughs> that we propagate healing, and transformation, resurrection through us, not further the pain of people already under. Why don't you just stand to your feet this morning? I love that 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But the person who is united or joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. The person who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with Him. When you make a decision, not just to say a little prayer, but to join your life to His life, to yield your will, to yield your life to Him. Stop trying to be your own Savior. Stop trying to be your own Lord. But when you come to the place where I yield my life to you, my life isn't working so well. My tent is kind of collapsing. My mind is collapsing. My emotions are collapsing. I'm not joined to, I don't have any spiritual source of life in the, in, inside of me. I'm drawing from TikTok. I draw from this. I draw from that. I draw from a bottle. But I, I've never joined my life back to Christ. You can make a decision today. Father, today I. I'm lost without you. I try to find life from every other source but you. Father, I want to join my life to you today through Jesus Christ. Just like the scripture, whoever joins his life, not just comes to church, but joins his whole life. Yield my whole life, everything I am, everything I hope to be. I yield all of me to you, Jesus. 
and I join my life with you and according to Scripture, I become one spirit with you that you put your spirit and join it into my spirit and become the source of my life. For people here today, if you have never received Jesus as your Saviour, you can make a decision right now to join your life to Him. Join your life to Him. That means to join your heart, to join your spirit, to join your mind, to join every part of who you are to Him. Without doing that, you'll find that the rest of your life will collapse. Today you have an opportunity to join your life to Christ, to allow His Spirit to come inside of you, to bring you into a a new creation. That's what the Apostle Paul did. He was a murderer. Murdered innocent people, but he joined his life to Christ. He he gave his life to Christ and he, he gave that authority. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives now inside of me. And his life is emanating from me. Today, if that's you, you've never invited Jesus Christ into your life. You've never invited him to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. Today, you could make that decision. If that is you this morning, you've never received Jesus. You're living life on your own. You're living life on your own strength. There's no spiritual source that's inside of you. Today, you wanna make a decision. Today, I wanna say, Jesus, come, I want to join my life back to you. Why don't you just... As we just worship just this last few moments, please come to the front. I'd love to be able to pray for you. For others here today, my encouragement to you would be this. Let it be your desire to seek the ways of the Lord. Father, show me your ways. Teach me your ways. Show me your ways of finance. Show me your ways of blessing. Show me the path of righteousness today. Come, let's lift up our hands and worship Him this morning. Worthy, worthy. Sing once more, worthy, 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 Lord, forever. Let's worship Him this morning. Forever singing, worthy, 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 Lord, another glimpse of glory. Sing once more, worthy, worthy, worthy. Come on, let's worship Him this morning. Awesome. Is there anyone else that want to respond to this morning? Come on, don't be shy. Be brave like these young ones. You've never received Christ. Never received Christ. But today you want to make a decision. Maybe a little shy, eh? That's a good. Great to have you here. Who brought you? Who brought you here? Your cousin. Oh, Ria. Oh, really? That's so good. Come on, Ria. What we're going to do right now is we're just going to pray. We're just going to close our eyes. Just Everyone else will go away. Just you and the Lord. And you are a very, very special person, you know. You're incredibly valuable. It doesn't really matter what's happened to you or what's been done, what you've done. You are a very, very special person. You've got a real special part of your being. It's called your heart and your spirit. God's got a great plan for you first part of that plan is to allow Him to come into your life and be the source of your life. Today, making making that decision, it's a lifelong decision. It's every day, Father, thank you for your mercy, thank you for your grace. Today, I'm going to live for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Don't look at me, just close your eyes. I want you to focus on the Lord. What we're going to do is as I pray, everyone else is going to pray. We're going to follow me in this prayer. And I want you to pray it from the bottom of your heart. By faith, the Holy Spirit will come and touch you and join us Himself to you. Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I open my life and my heart before you. Today, I acknowledge I am a sinner. And I'm separated from you. But today, Jesus, I turn to you. I open up my heart to you. I ask you, Jesus to come into my being, to come into my heart, to come into my spirit, 
to join your life to mine. Today, Jesus, I join my life to yours. Thank you, Jesus, that you have saved me. Come into my heart today, and I'll live for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me just pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these beautiful young ones. Thank you today for their lives. God, even at a young age, they've experienced some challenges, experienced some pain. Lord, I thank you that you've brought them here today by the power of your Spirit. I pray, Father, that your love would come into their lives. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, as you come into them, you join yourself to them, that you'll bring great comfort, that you'll bring healing, that you'll bring transformation into them. Father, thank you for your love for them. Lord, that they don't walk alone. Father, thank you, your spirit strengthens them and empowers them today. Father, release your hand of blessing upon their lives in Jesus' name. May they prosper in this world. May you use them powerfully for your kingdom today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, it's awesome. So glad that you responded. We're just going to talk to you afterwards, but one of the girls, one of the guys are just going to stand with you and just share with you. Amen. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this morning. Let's make a commitment to learn the ways of the Spirit of God. Love you heaps. If you need prayer for anything, for healing, be here to pray for you. Just please feel free. Otherwise, go and have a nice cream. Lots of love to you. Pastor Mike will be preaching next week.